All right, welcome back. We're on the DIY pond project in our backyard. In the last video, we stripped all the topsoil off the top. We're down to a good layer of clay. We're gonna start building back up on that layer of clay. And hopefully before we're done here, we'll be hauling dirt out of this place. But I don't know, there's a lot to be done yet. Stick around and see where we get. Dig dry, DIY. So I used to work in excavating. We dug a lot of ponds back in the 90s and 2000s. And one of the things I always wanted if I ever had a pond for myself was a sidewalk all the way around the top perimeter. And that's what we plan to do here. That's one of the things that's gonna hopefully make it unique. This one's geared towards swimming, so it'll have a walk path all the way around the top. That'll make it really nice to maintain the edge between the grass and where the pond starts, and it'll also help to maintain the inside of the bank where it goes down to meet the water. Another benefit of a sidewalk all the way around the perimeter as well as we get older and we wanna do more walking and exercising, we'll have a designated path where we can stay on the concrete. And I think it'll be nice to come out here in the mornings or in the evenings and take a walk around the pond. That's the plan. So in order to prepare for the concrete, this right here had to be cut out so we can build it back up and then pour on top of the dirt. This area is gonna be a patio. We're gonna have it about nine to 10 feet wide through here. Then it'll taper down to a three foot sidewalk all the way around. I had to mark it out where I need to start building in order to have a taper and then be level over to the, to the existing grass and it'll be a little bit higher than the grass. This is where I need to start building. So I'm gonna come along here with the backhoe and start stealing dirt from inside the pond and piling it up here to build this stuff. Get the backhoe down inside here and then I'm gonna start working on the top. The water won't start until out here and the beach will be right where the backhoe is. So beach will go around there. It'll get deep as we go that way. There'll be a pier down here out of view, but I need to start digging out here clay placing it up here, up to about right here, and then it will taper down. Actually, it'll, it'll be tapered up like this and then start to taper down. So this is a little bit of an overbuild and then it'll get cut out. I'm just gonna scratch this up, get down to some wet dirt. There's some moisture underneath there. You gotta have a little bit of moisture in order for things to pack together. I don't wanna put it right on top of the super dry dirt. So I'm just scratching it up, fluffing it. And then I'll just keep fluffing as I go around. All right, so I've made my way around the top and I've dug up clay. I, I made kind of a keyway around the outside. So before I started building the outside back up, I made at least a three foot wide trench, got down to good clay that was had a lot of moisture in it yet. And then I put clay on top of that to build it up. So now I've got that first layer done. I didn't want to build more than a foot at a time so that I can compact it. I'm going to go around and just knock it down real light with a backhoe. So you can see that the pond is going to be shrunken in quite a bit more. The water is not going to be out till about right there. So it's not a real big pond. Like I said, it's a swimming pond. It's going to be geared as such, hopefully. Low maintenance and easy to keep up. But right now I'm going to move on to the next phase. As much as I think it would be cool to be able to try to do this whole thing with just the backhoe, I know it's not that practical. Matter of fact, what I've done so far isn't exactly practical, but I've done it all with my own equipment. However, I am gonna go seek out another piece of equipment and that'll make things a lot, a lot easier moving forward. So. Well, if you might've seen, I got a bulldozer from my cousins and I used to run a bulldozer, but it's been a long time. Let's see what I can do still. Hopefully it's like riding a bike, except like a dozer. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and pack down the top again with the backhoe and a full bucket full of weight, and then we'll start building it up again some more. All right, well, I've got my second lift done, went around the entire outside, put good clay on top. Now I'm gonna deck it off with the dozer, wheel pack it in with the backhoe, and then I'm gonna check some grade and see where we are. My goal is just to get the top established, and tomorrow we can final grade the top get the elevation set. And once that's done, we need to remark out our sidewalk area and where the edge is, and then we'll start going down with the bank. Once we start going down with the bank is when we can start hauling dirt out. So the girls are checking out the water in the bottom. Oh man. That's good. That might not be good. Why? Because we got, I got to dig in that and work in that. Some bowls. Is it good clay? Yeah. That really is good clay. You gonna fire that and make a bowl? Or just let it air dry. Yeah. You ready for this pond to be done, Ella? I'm making gloves. Gloves? 
I see. Now I just want to wheel pack it before it's completely dark. Get this smashed down so it doesn't dry too much. All right, it is a new day here on the Backyard DIY Pond Project. I've got all day to work, so I hope to get a lot accomplished. But the first thing I want to do is dig out a couple drainage tiles that I discovered in the pond as I was digging. We got to get those out of there so that we can prevent the pond from leaking through them. I call it tile all the time, then people question what I'm talking about. So here's a clay drainage tile, and this is what they used in the old days before they had plastic. I found one of these in the pond. You can see it right here. So this tile was running right through here, right behind the dozer, and it would have been going right into the house. And so I would have hit that tile when I dug the basement or when I put in my water line to the stove. I'm not worried about that one taking any water that way necessarily because I've cut it multiple times. As you can see, they used to make the drainage pipe out of clay, clay tiles, like a tile roof. And so everyone around here just calls drainage pile, whether it's plastic, concrete, or clay, they call it tile. But over here on the other hand, this is a plastic drainage tile. This one's a little bit newer, and I did not even know this was in the backyard. You can see it goes right here. So what would happen is if I would leave that tile, and let's say I only got a minimal amount of dirt over the top of it, the water could find its way to that tile inside the pond and then run out into the drainage system in the field and cause the pond to leak. Now, I'm surprised they put that tile in like that with the pine trees being there because the pine trees are probably gonna plug it all up. And those trees have been there a long time, but nonetheless, so I'll start digging it there and dig it back through the bank up to right here in the yard. And then I'll cut it off back here and compact that trench full of clay and make sure that the water doesn't have a chance to get into that. That'll hopefully save it from leaking on this side. Now, the tile over here looks like it goes right through the dozer there. If I discover that on the other side of the pond over there, then I'll probably dig it back as well. There's more of that clay tile. So I put a red flag in where I hit the clay tile here and dig it back through the bank, and then I'll compact it full. So I wanna do that this morning so I can keep working on the top. I need to get the top built up. All right. Let's set up and try to get this dug out. This is another one of those time killers, efficiency killers. You can't move dirt when you're digging up tile, but this could be the difference between the pond leaking or holding water. And a lot of times this doesn't get done correctly. So I'm gonna leave the three foot bucket on for this so that I can compact it. I have a better chance of compacting it back in the bank if I use a big bucket. It's all good clay there on top. Okay, right here it is. I'm gonna try to dig it up without tearing it all up so I can just follow it back. Doesn't look like it's ever had any water in it. All right, I'm gonna backfill some of this so that I can get the backhoe over here and dig going this way. trench pond I got it dug back clear through the bank so I'm gonna cut this tile off and then cap it I can see it's already got tree roots in it here it actually smells like pine how many roots are in there can you see it I don't know if it'll focus then I'm gonna take something like this, cap it off. So I got that 
Tupperware shoved up in there. I'll throw a rock in there and keep it. It's not gonna be sealed up because the tile is perforated anyway, but look at that. It's headed right for that pine tree. This will all get filled full of clay and it'll be quite a ways from the water. Hope that holds. So I'm having him work up the, the surface since I wheel packed it. I don't want a really nice, slick, shiny surface. So I'm just having him run over it with the dozer and that'll bust up that top surface, make it loose. And then the new dirt I add to it will knit to it a little bit better. Okay, I thought I would do a quick little lesson on how I check grade, how I've established grade for the top of the pond. First of all, you gotta come up with a benchmark. That's somewhere where you can set your laser up throughout the course of the project and it doesn't change. So in this case, this is the concrete surface. There's some handprints right here. And my benchmark is the palm of my hand that's stamped into the concrete. So this grade stick is actually called a lanker rod. And I can move this ribbon up and down by loosening up this right here. So I loosen up that holder and then I can slide the ribbon up and down. So for example, if you move your laser head and it changes in elevation, and now the laser plane is up here, I can move the ribbon so that I change zero. And on that spot, wherever I set the laser, I'm gonna make it read zero. I've set zero on my palm. Zero is my concrete. I want the top of the concrete around my pond to be two tenths higher. So that means I go down two tenths. And if I lift the laser beam up, then it'll hit at the same point. That makes zero two the finished elevation of my concrete sidewalk around the top of the pond. I know at that elevation that I'm likely not gonna get water from the field into the pond. I don't want groundwater, field water, flood water entering the pond. Now, in order to be at my subgrade, meaning I want the concrete to be about two, three and a half inches thick, I'm gonna allow for maybe putting a little bit of stone underneath the sidewalk. And so I'm gonna set my subgrade at 9.8. That means I have to lower the bottom of the stick in order to get down to my subgrade. Anything below here is fill, meaning that it's lower than my target. And anything up here is cut, meaning it's above my target elevation. I want the top of the dirt to be 9.8 all the way around. So what I did was I went around and I drove some wooden stakes or some lath, we call them. And I marked with the laser where my subgrade elevation was at the bottom of the lath. And then I took an orange ribbon and I tied that around the base. I'm gonna mark all the stakes so I can kind of see that at a distance. And that really helps me when I'm on the dozer to kind of see where I'm at. There's all kinds of ways that they have to do this now that are much fancier, like a laser or GPS guided bulldozer blades. I don't have any of that. I'm just gonna eyeball it and get it as close as I can manually. So I should mention that this area around the top where we took out all the topsoil and then filled and compacted it back in with clay was to provide a stable base to pour the concrete sidewalk on top of. And it's hard to get a sense for the elevations and slope in a video, but the top of the sidewalk will be 12 inches above the surrounding field. And this happens to already be the highest area of our property. We don't want to allow any runoff into the pond in order to help keep it clean, but we also didn't want to raise it too far out of the ground to where it would look weird and out of place. So from past experiences and witnessing large rain events here, we know that the elevation at the benchmark I showed you near the garage is essentially safe from flooding. So the top of the pond is even a few tenths above that. Hopefully that will keep it high above any potential floodwaters, but obviously mother nature can throw a curveball at any time and if flooding ever does enter the pond, trust me, that'll be the least of our worries. So how will this pond fill up with water you might ask? Well, like many others in our area, it'll eventually fill up with rainwater. It could take a while and we may run some additional water into it, but it will fill up. There'll be an overflow pipe near the top that will keep it from overrunning the banks, but it should just fluctuate up and down between rain events and evaporation days in the hot summer. We're lucky enough to have sufficient annual rainfalls combined with heavy clay soils that make this a really common practice in our area. Your location may vary though. <laughs> so with the top set to subgrade and compacted once again with a heavily loaded backhoe, we were finally ready to really start digging. This is arguably the most important part of the pond layout. We're going back through and marking out the top. Everything I dig moving forward from now on is all gonna be 
dictated by where we put this stuff. That's gonna mark out where I start cutting the bank down. So we gotta get this right, take a little time, and then we can finally start hogging dirt. This will be concrete patio in between the orange marks. It's nine feet wide. It'll have a stretch of 24 feet long where it's nine foot, and then it'll taper back down to three foot. This is marked out at four feet right now. I wanna have a little bit of room on each side of the sidewalk to get it formed up. So nine eight is my target on top. right on my concrete will then be my concrete will be up here and then I will taper dirt out away from it so my tops pretty close but I got to come along with the dozer now and I'm gonna start cutting this bank down I got to cut out all this dirt that I filled in the reason I filled that back in was you know I'd had the topsoil stripped out and I wanted to fill that in. I had to fill it in level so that I could compact it. So that whole layer is kind of like a core, like a keyway. And now it's just a matter of jumping on the dozer and going around. And as I start peeling this down, it'll kind of fill in where I've already dug out. And that will be where we start digging. Once I kind of establish this bank, it's, it's difficult to explain, but you have to establish this bank with the dozer. The dozer is just the easiest thing because it, it gives you a line and it allows you to make it consistent. And then I'll start digging it out once I know where the line is. Well, I got the bank established now and we're moving dirt down. It's time to start moving dirt out. I think we're gonna need a dump truck, so. Ready to go get a dump truck? The general's been parked in this barn for over six months now, and I haven't even seen it. I haven't been over here to look at it, so I don't know if it'll start or what, but we're gonna try. It may not even crank. It sat here for six months. Can you believe that? We're through May. That's five months, and I brought it before probably November. Not gonna do it. I'm gonna hook to this one. All right, it's only been plugged in for a couple minutes, but I wanna try it. Okay, it's on engine start. Easy peasy. <laughs> Let's see if the general will come over there. What you got going here? Got all the windows to where you can see out of them. Oh yeah, Except I see you got half of that one. Half of this one yet. So Dad's been trying to get the general all primed and ready, cleaning the windows, adjusting mirrors, pumping up tires, lubing up the air tailgate. Of course, we got three measures of protection here. We got this. We got the six by six under there, and there's also a four by four propped up so the bed doesn't try to come down but we got to put oil in the hydraulic reservoir here because this is all the higher that the bed raises right now right it runs out of oil so we got a little bit more work to get the the general all ready dad's been doing that while i've been digging and uh then we'll be ready to maybe haul some dirt one of these days it's a good thing we're not ready for dirt yet all right that was good All right, we went looking for the general, but I decided to get a little more than that. I stopped over at my father-in-law's, grabbed the mini excavator, and I think that might help with the situation we got going on. That truck looks huge compared to that excavator, but I have a plan. We're ready to start trucking dirt. I don't care if we load with the mini, with my backhoe, or probably a combination of both. I'm gonna start getting this dirt out of this hole and trucking it off site. And you'll have to wait till next week to see how that goes. <laughs> but I wanna thank you so much for clicking on this video. I hope that you liked it. You know, if you haven't subscribed, you may want to in order to catch the next installment of this series. But if I'm lucky, I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much. What's going on over here, you think? <laughs> Just like their dad. They like playing in the dirt. Pile of dirt's been done for like 10 seconds. What's going on here? Uh, 
Well, this is the good slide. You know, there's two more slides over there. What? You might be able to put all three slides together. <laughs> all right. Down. Just try not to cave the whole mountain down into here. I guess I can push it back up. But. Ella, let's go get the other two. Come on, let's all go. All right. We're going to go get another piece of equipment. <laughs> 